Welcome to Staring at the City. We discuss artists, their careers, and what's coming up. Coming to you from the Twin Cities in Minnesota. You are Staring at the City. Welcome to Staring at the City. My name is Nathan. Uh, make sure you join the Founders Club, starting at $1. That's how we pay our artists. I got a very special guest with me here today. Her name is Maria Issa. She is a singer, a songwriter, an actress, a rapper, and a producer. And she's also the representative for District 65B in West St. Paul and St. Paul. Maria, how are you? I am fantastic. It's great to be here in District. Uh, and it's amazing to be here with someone that I appreciate uh, all the work that you do for our community and particularly our community of artists um, and particularly of our stories of movement, of movimiento and uh, for just being so consistent mm. as an artist. I recognize that and it's, uh, it's, it's not easy work. People don't know what, it, what goes behind the scenes and so I appreciate what you do and yeah. thank you for inviting me absolutely you know it's a lot of hustle a lot of grind that's nothing new for either of us um i want to start this off i'm going to put this up on the screen i took this picture at south by southwest in 2013 i think oh wow yeah <laughs> what a time gosh that was yeah, too look, wow look at that look at that picture tell me <laughs> Do you remember that? I do. That was at <laughs> South by uh, who? I, I, I know a lot of people forget things, yeah. but I could never have that? forgettable mem yeah, no, memories that, from I was South like, by. Because I was like, I only knew you like through the grapevine at that time, but then like I was at the show, Minnesota Fats, and then we're there, and then yeah, like, Fats. I looked over, I was like, is that? He was like, that's Marie. I was like, oh, I like didn't really like even know like. You who took you were, that but picture. I, knew you. Yeah, yeah. I know that picture. Yeah, and like, that's I, like, like met you and like. Yeah. Uh, anyways, like, what, what do you <laughs> see in that picture and like, what were you thinking at that time, career-wise, contrast versus like now, like, you know? Yeah. I see myself um, working extremely hard and I see myself just finishing a Latino Hollywood film. Mm -hmm. I see myself, you know, managing my own career and label. I see myself in different partnerships and relationships that I'm no longer in and that I've survived. Uh, I see a strong, Soda Rican, confident yet unsure, but willing to go through the next tunnel to get to where she needs to be. That's what I see. And I, I was, gosh, 25 right there. Uh, 25, 26, around there, yeah. So maybe like 10, about 10 years ago, maybe? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, like, contrast that to, like, where you are now. You know? I'm uh, the <laughs> rep who raps. <laughs> I'm the rep who raps. Um, on that stage, I was rapping about politics and <laughs> the globe and... I was teaching at like Red Ring Correctional Facility mm. and Stadium Views with nonprofit programming and touring the country to talk about peace with Nobel Peace Laureates. And so those are the, 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 the battles, right? You think about, you know, I was a soldier right there, but now I feel like a general. Ha, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and for all of the soldiers, that are alongside with me still, you know, because it's not just about me, it's a movement. We read about Malcolm X, folks quote Martin Luther King, folks quote, you know, who they know, but I like to always tend to quote the folks of history that people don't know. Hmm. You know, I think about the Asada Shakurs that, huh. that deserve her roses and the Lolita Lebron was my first rap name who, you know, uh, led the P Puerto Rican uh, political uh, independence actions and in, uh, in, in a place where we couldn't even enter, hmm. you know? So right now, all of that is developed into not just 
a musician and an artist, but it's developed me being a mother to a beautiful black Puerto Rican girl who is a, who knows that she's already been a part of the system because mommy tells her that, that the moment that she took her breath, you know, her mom and her dad decided not to check those boxes uh, that the county give you to place okay. you in these demographics yeah. and yeah. because she doesn't fit in these boxes. That's always how I felt. And so I'm not going to, and knowing that. And so like, that is where I'm at in, when folks ask me, how'd you get involved? It's like, we've always been involved. We're always involved, my daughter, it's four. I was involved in politics at four. So I just see me being where I'm exactly supposed to be because that's what my village raised me and it takes a village. Mm -hmm. And I see myself wanting that same part for my daughter with breaking cycles and breaking chains and getting exactly what I, what we deserve. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Let me play something for you. They told me I couldn't write. They told oh, me I couldn't <laughs> They told me that we couldn't utilize our curriculums or speak of our leadership and where we come from, whether it be the island of Oriquen, Oaxaca, Mexico, Michoacan, Colombia, Somalia, Nigeria, the continent of the beauty of heartbeat of drum like Africa, Woo! the refugee camps of Thailand, There's pride in that. Celebrate it. We celebrate that. We don't look at the borders. We don't create them. We create circles like the drums that I play. We communicate by the drum. And there's there's two different groups that we're working with here, and I'm not talking about parties. Talk about talk about that moment when you decided to run. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like it was yesterday, but it also seems like it was the time being of what, two years, I'm going into my re-election right now. Hmm. What I was thinking about, I launched a campaign for state senate first um, in my district because there was a demand for change from my community. And it just wasn't the Latino community, just my community, because folks need to recognize that. Um, and our community, the Latino community, need to recognize that too. So it's it was a, a call of action, and 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 it felt like a torch passing hmm. from all of these amazing supporters that I'm getting emotional right now because some of them aren't living anymore. Quite a few of them aren't living anymore, whether they. Uh, age to seven decades, eight decades, or just four, just two. Um, and I thought of that moment as, here we go, to put ourselves in the biggest fight that we've ever fought. Mm. Because I look at everything as boxing. <laughs> sure. I'm a Puerto Rican. I grew oh, okay. up with boxers. Yeah. My uncle is an Olympian, bronze medalist boxer, Ooh. you know, and uh, my grandfather, you know, like my aunt, even my late aunt, like, I remember she was like, you want to defend yourself? And I was young. You know, you want to, you arguing, you guys going to put some gloves on. And she was a Bronx Puerto Rican. And I was like, you know, we were like, I think I was like, I can, I can never tell that to my daughter. I <laughs> go fight, but you know, but that's how we were raised to protect ourselves. So I took all of that energy of feeling my ancestors and also seeing the reflection of just community, man. And not even for my own district. I had people coming in from Minneapolis. I had folks didn't know that they couldn't vote for me. So they took signs and you have my state senate signs going all over to the north side to Woodbury and I was like yo let me teach you who to vote for there brother mm. <laughs> that's gonna be supportive yeah. for me but um you know I shifted it to the house of representatives because um Carlos Mariani representative Mariani had been in that seat for 32 years decided out the blue to just retire mm. 
And so I said, I want to make policy. Okay. I want to create policy. Yeah. This isn't about what level, but this is where I know I need to make policy here at the state. Because it's not just about even my own district when I push that green, I push it on the voices of my uh -huh. constituents, but I'm voting for the whole state. That's nice. I like that descriptive. Oh, absolutely. I make sure I. Pushing the button. <laughs> Trans Refuge State? Yep. Legalization of cannabis? Yep. Expungements of records? Yep. Insulin for all? Absolutely. I was going to ask you about that too. Yeah. Um, we <laughs> yep. can, I honestly feel like this could last a really long time, but since we have like a limited time, let me keep going. Yeah. Tell me about teaching, because you've been a teacher for a very long time, and tell me, how do you feel about the state of, as a state representative, how do you feel about the state of Minnesota schools? <sighs> I can speak um, as a teacher, as someone that, you know, you go into the space to do your job as a, as a teacher, right? you have your curriculum, but as a teacher, our teachers deserve more. Hmm. We're talking about, we show up to our jobs to teach based off curriculum, but we're the social workers. We're the nurses. We're- Shout out to the nurses so, too, yeah. we're sa We are the safety amongst the safe, what's supposed to be the safety. So as a teacher it's hard it's very difficult in the state of minnesota sure. and i'm working on ed finance committee to make sure that you know our teachers are getting what they deserve at the same time that our students Big time. are yeah so what is the state of it needs a lot of work but for the first time um in the state's history we've been able to do so much more and there's so much more to be done you know so i will say i feel like and this is not to generalize, but I feel like in, when it comes to the Twin Cities, St. Paul schools, for some reason, seem to be running more smoothly than Minneapolis district mm. schools. How, do you agree with that, disagree with that, or what do you, how do you feel? I mean, they both have their pits and peaks, but I concur, and this isn't just about St. Paul versus everybody, no, no, <laughs> you no, know, no, but yeah. it, it is the district that I work within it, but there's a lot more, um, I see uh, community engagement amongst not just one school, but all the schools together. Okay. Um, and I see such great representation right now at the new frontage of the school board. Uh, okay. You know, shout out to Carlo and, you know, Erica um, that I work closely with in Chantel and then the, the folks that were sitting on the board that pushed to, you know, get those movements of uh, education from those leadership and community in there as well, you know, so I uh, see more of communication. There's so much that needs to be done. Yeah. But there is a certain avenue, and I don't think that's just only with education, brother. I think that it also happens amongst everything that we're doing in St. Paul versus Minneapolis. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak to that personally, but yeah, um, just like being in the schools like every day, you know, but okay, yeah. Um, I'll have to have you back on to do like maybe a deeper dive on some of these things, but we're going to take a quick break. Uh, you are staring at the city. When I launched my campaign, because I told my campaign manager I wasn't going to come. She called me, where are you? Everybody, you know, what time we have you scheduled walking in? And I was in the car by myself heading to go pick up Moo and the baby and my parents. And like, it was... I told her I'm not coming and she almost fucking had it. Sam was like, she could have beat me up that day if it wasn't for the fact that I did that. Was, no, that was a big moment. She I was like, what? Yeah. I said, I got cold feet. I'm headed to the airport, yeah, going to Puerto yeah, Rico. Yeah, tell Muja, tell everybody, I'll see you in two days. Here we are. Okay, you back, we staring at the city. I've got Maria Issa. Maria, please tell me about your current role or like roles, because I know you do like many things. Um, so music, how do you balance that work-life balance with making the law, you know what I mean? And like being a mother, like all those things. Just talk about balancing all of your roles. Uh, it takes a village. And, but the balance is also, you have to take care of yourself. I'm learning to do that more. Um, it's been a struggle, uh, but I'm learning to put the, the focus of of caring for my cheese so that it amplifies onto others' cheese. And so 
It's, you know, eating right is best. Rest is, uh, is harder these days as a mom and doing all those roles, but it's also ensuring that you place boundaries and responsibilities so that you can give everything, not just 30% here, 10% here, but that you're giving everything 100%. And I know that sounds like, oh, blah, 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 philosophy. Where'd you carry that one from? But it, it's true, you know, treat yourself to a good meal. There's people that don't have food. Chill in your crib and 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 do push-ups. I do push-ups everywhere that I'm at. <laughs> that's but that's that's the the example of like feel yourself and know your limitations. As we get older, know your limitations so yeah. that you don't lose your strength in any capacity. For real. Yeah. Because you are the rep who raps, you know what I mean? Like and like I feel like that's almost a superhero like a comic book type mm -hmm. persona like mm -hmm. it, know, that's probably not always easy to like do you feel like you have to like kind of like maintain something like a, a front at all or are you just always like going like are you really like always going like i'm always going <laughs> that's why when people are like maria like at the cap oh she's the party one let's and i was like no i'm not i'll throw the party i'll make some business off the party but yeah. That you guys didn't do all of that in your twenties. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for sure. But you like, know, you, you take it to another level. And like, I don't know. I'm like I'm, hustle. Ooh, sorry. No, hustle, 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 hustle. Yeah, we gotta hook that up. Hustles, hustle, hustles. Um, but it's yeah, it's just everything you do. And then like, talk about unlock the chamber. Unlock the chamber is the first music that I've been recording and writing since I've been out of the chamber, as my first session was complete. And um, I had been, you know, really performing and touring Capitolio because I was locked in the chamber mm. and I couldn't do all of that. I couldn't leave. And as soon as we got out, you know, we went to do the hip hop festival in Puerto Rico and film a video. You know, we've done shows on the East Coast That's and throughout, you know, the Midwest. So it's, um, it was like all of that, I was unlocked. And now I'm also like, we're about to start the new session yes. and it's been locked up since we've been out, out of there. So unlock that and let's get to work. Mm -hmm. um, and let's move and let's dance. And yeah, let's make some time for ourselves to party, you know, a little bit, but. Wow, like what's what's your favorite part of the, pro like what's your favorite song? What's the, what song stands out to you? Like, is there, is the whole thing? It's just, you know? I would say the whole thing, you know, as an artist, you have, different canvas pieces that maybe go on this wall and that wall, right? So yeah. I would say I really love what's been released, um, which is uh, Knock You Down. You know, I did a cover of the LL Cool J, knock, Mama Said Knock You Out, so Knock You Down, right? Okay. And I put that like literally out a week before uh, the recent election for the city. As a video? As a, uh, no, just as a, as a, as a track, as, a track. as an MP3, yeah. Yeah, shared yeah. it out and um, really motivated a lot of these, the new wave of voters to, to, to get involved into their politics so that we have better education. Shout out to Carlo Franco. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the fusion of, of a couple different worlds, and I love to see it. And you, you told me a story right before we started this about someone who didn't know you rap and was at one of your speeches. And was like, oh, you rap? Like, <laughs> like I knew you rap, and then like you became like, you know what I mean? So it's just to see the fusion of worlds. It's it's really cool to see the progression and just good job. Hip hop is amazing, it's, and it's fifty. It's, it's five decades, so like the leadership that's in there, if they don't understand hip hop, then they need to go because they are outdated hmm. in American culture and history that has a, uh, you want to talk about prison reform? Let's talk about hip hop. You want to talk about housing? Let's talk about hip hop. You want to talk about entrepreneurship within BIPOC communities and workforce? Let's talk hip hop. Yeah. So taxes, let's talk hip hop. We don't need no more Lauryn Hills and Nas, you know, having to work their artwork to pay society off because they didn't understand the competency because that's not educated to our kids' economics. So all of that is hip hop. For real. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's awesome that it's like that obvious. Like now, like, I, I feel like even just asking that, I was like, what was I even like asking that for? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, but thanks, because there's so many people that don't literally yeah. are there sitting there like, what is this? Or you're underqualified. That has been like, and even among certain people that like you've helped get into those positions of office and elected that 
won't look at you in the eye at certain places or don't describe. And then, so you know what happens? You think I'm cool with that? What would happen in a hip hop cipher? Type you shit. get called out. Type shit. You get called out. Type shit. <laughs> I love to see it, man. Like, it's honestly like something that I've always thought and like, I've been into politics too, but I'm like, oh, like I'm in music, so like I can't do politics. You know what I mean? It's just like that barrier that like we put, it's like no. so artificial. It's yeah. It's there, man. Yeah. It's there. How many, you, you don't think, you know, Senator Cory Brooker, all, you don't think Ilhan is blasting Wale, you don't think, you know, like, AOC is from the Bronx, you know, like, you don't think that, what is playing in your headphones? You think that we're listening to uh, men who enslaved and then took our, our, our culture and our instruments? These things are deeply ingrained. When we go through the education system, we have to break out of these, like, thought patterns. No, you know, come on. Oh, it's, no, that's we hear it. now, though. Yeah, that's right. Shout out to Ethnic Studies. It's happening. For real. Yeah. Final question. And, like, honestly, this is kind of what we've already been talking about. Like, but what's coming? Like, for state of Minnesota, or if you want to get into, like, the bigger picture, like, nationally, I know there's, like, election coming up. Um, or What's even coming? Like internationally. I have a re-election, so yeah. let's talk about let's that. Talk about state. If you yeah. like my work, if you like the representation that I do, um, and whether you live in my district or not, like I have to uh, go up for re-election, yeah. and I, you'll see me campaigning just as much as you see me, if not even more, um, in this upcoming election because I don't sleep. If this isn't about you're in a safe spot. It's never safe. I don't ever feel safe, with, and, and this is work for the people. So that means that you gotta be with your people. So check out, you know, um, peoplefrommariaisa.org. And if you are in, in, in a mode of cannabis is legal and we gotta work more on that, we have a lot of education finance that are in our schools and, and policy, that's, that's a part of the work. Housing to organize and rent stabilization. Okay, that's what I'm on. Children and families and making sure that our kids are safe and they're being fed at school and don't have to walk around about thinking about what ticket they got. Like, that's a part of the work. 80,000 undocumented folks having a right to serve and know the rules for public safety to have a driver's license. Is that Minnesota? Yeah. Yeah, look I at mean, those numbers, man. I'm gonna, that's I'm gonna put that up. 80,000 immigrants, undocumented folks that now get to get their driver's license effective. And there's huge people. economics with that go with that too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Billions. We had $18 billion in that bag last session. Mm. The most that the state has like, you know, and so when it was organizations that you've seen rub pennies together, do the steps of work to go through the system of this policy work and engage with folks that are requesting for millions of dollars to build their building or get a building or or have a program not being ran by fundraising and selling tamales and <laughs> come on now, bro, and, and chicken yeah. dinners and Absolutely, greens. Yeah. like. That's what the equity looked like with the biggest class of equity, okay? Biggest class of equity in this session with that trifecta, okay? So like we are talking the about, again? the trifecta is where all the three levels of bodies of government in the state are, are ran by the same majority of the party. So we have a DFL majority. Right now. Right now. Beautiful, okay. And you think that just happened by like, oh, by a lottery? No, you had, caucuses revamp that it we might did. change. Movimiento. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of uh, sentiments in the air, you know? Oh, now it's, it's yeah. let's see it's the fight. action. You know, I'd say we got everybody, here's the goal list, here are the objectives, then now let's go see the productivity and you're, the yeah, outcome. You're way more in it than me, so I can't really like see exactly what you're saying, but I'm gonna go and do my research and then like, yeah. Maybe we can have another conversation, but yeah. Absolutely. I'm working on a policy right now called Tenants' Rights to Organize hmm. so that uh, renters have accessibility to their space that they're renting and are not getting uh, kicked out and evicted on certain angles that are just unjust. I mean, that's how deep it is, What's right? That so it's the tenant rights to organize, and um, I'm carrying it in the House, and uh, Senator Muhammad is carrying it in the Senate. So, uh, you know, a lot of love to the West Side, South Side Connections, and we know in the Twin Cities area, we build together for state policy to work. Um, and, and so it's just, uh, we, we're gonna make some noise with that one. We're gonna make some noise with that one. And a Latino Arts Museum of Minnesota is, uh, yeah. is another uh, policy that I'm, I'm really uh, 
carrying a, a sword and and riding a dragon with that one too. You know, you gotta be serious, you gotta be serious <laughs> about these things. There's like I feel like there's a lot of like I said before, there's like a lot of forces out here like swirling. So yeah, nice. awesome. Wolf's hat, also. Uh, Thank you. Final note mm -hmm. I want to say is you Almost. for me tear down and I've said this in different ways tear down that like invisible wall between like these politics and like these things that like we think we can't affect and like where I was before you know so thank you thank Appreciate you. you I hope you keep doing what you're doing you're staring at the city it's Nathan we got Maria it's the rep who raps <laughs>